Welcome to the Motormouth YouTube channel. I'm Zach. I'm Andrea. And we do full-length car reviews each and every week. And we stop for a segment halfway through called Questions, Coffee, and Cars. Mm -hmm. And we spun it off into its own thing. We're at number 49, right? Yeah. Almost 50. All right. So how do you get a question in? Follow along on Instagram at Motormouth underscore Andrea. I put a post out every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific time. It's only up for a short time. Once we gather all of our questions, the post is deleted and we start the show. Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Your questions from Instagram. Hello, guys. Love your videos. Thank you. Your expectations for the new 2025 RAV4. When is it going to launch and available in the market for sale? Okay, so when they uh, launched the last one, it came out in December of 2019. That's right. So it, you just follow the pattern. It'll be the end of 2024. Mm -hmm. And we did ask Toyota about this. Mum's the word. They didn't tell us anything. So we really have no information on it. But rumors are that a new one is coming. So we'll have to wait for that. You want to know my prediction, Andrea? Mm -hmm. They're going to follow the trend of hybrid only. They've done that with Camry. The mm -hmm. new Camry is only hybrid. Mm -hmm. uh, they've done that with the Venza. You've got the Crown Signia, only hybrid. Yeah, and I think probably because the sales of the hybrid are so strong, they mm -hmm. might just say that's going to be our power plant. Maybe, and then if they can increase uh, manufacturing of that hybrid and not worry about the gas model, I mean, that might be helpful for people who are on a wait list for that hybrid model. We'll wait and see lots to come mm -hmm. from Toyota. Boy, did they ever release a lot of new vehicles in 2023. And the interior, I think it's going to be um, similar to what we've seen with Crown, mm. um, Camry, it's going to have the new infotainment screen that kind of runs this way. That's mm -hmm. my guess. Yeah, we'll see. I don't think it's going to be as nice as the Crown Signia. Yeah. No, 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 no. You know, it's not I, as nice as that. No. Do you think manufacturers will start to eliminate the dealership as a means to sell their cars? I think the buying experience will be better if we purchase directly from the manufacturer. They could control the buying experience this way. Service and delivery could happen at the dealership. Well, we see that already going on with Volvo. You can um, order the vehicle online. You don't even have to go through the dealership if you choose not to. Genesis is doing that. Mm -hmm. Of course, Tesla is doing that. Uh, the problem is they have a lot of these um, licensing agreements with the dealer network mm -hmm. that are in place. So if they wanted to get out of that, they'd have to buy all these dealers out. And they have yeah. millions of dollars invested in bricks and mortar locations, mm -hmm. real estates. I mean, they all, they all very rich because he's sitting on real estate. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think the, the whole model is going away. There's something to be be said for having a place to go when you have yeah. a problem. Mm -hmm. The dealer, especially if you have a good relationship and a good dealer, mm -hmm. they can be uh, amazing to deal with. Yeah, for example, with Volkswagen and even with Porsche, uh, we have had great um, experiences with our Porsche dealership. We really like them a lot. And now we've ordered a Volkswagen GTI. And so far, so good. The experience has been great. We have our contact, Mark at uh, the VW dealership and he's been terrific. But it's all, all comes down to the training at the dealer. Mm -hmm. Some dealers are training their staff very well, others mm, not so much. And I think the most frustrating part is when you do go to a dealership and there's not that set price. You expect to pay MSRP, but there's a lot of markups right now and that becomes really frustrating. I think a hybrid um, scenario would be best where you have the option of both, so in I, my opinion. Yeah, that's kind of what we're moving towards mm -hmm. is you order the car online at a set price and they just fulfill it at the dealership. And that's yes. where you go for service. Yes. Love your channel. Had made up my mind for the VW Atlas exec line, but now confused after the prices were announced for the Kia EV9. With the rebates, the land trim comes very close to the Atlas. Which one should I go for? Do not have range anxiety as with little kids. We have to make multiple stops for long trips. <laughs> we talked about that, right? With long trips, multiple stops. Yeah, I can I just jump in here go quickly? Go ahead, yeah. So the EV9, you're not wrong on this. We're going to give Canadian prices. Um, it sounds like you are Canadian because you mentioned the exec line for the VW. The EV9 land all-wheel drive is just over $68,000 Canadian. And the Volkswagen exec line is $5,000 less than that. But then you throw in the federal EV rebate in Canada. It's also, known as, also known as our tax dollars. It ends uh, up breaking even. Yeah. And then you don't have gas. And then you have hopefully less maintenance yeah. because 
you're not having to do oil changes and all of that kind of stuff. The There is an argument to be made uh, for a lot of people that it will be cheaper in the long run. It's the initial um, upfront cost. And in this mm -hmm. case, it's exactly the same. We had a senior executive with us uh, with Kia when yeah. we drove the EV9. And he said the residual value, if you're going to lease an EV9, mm -hmm. is actually higher mm. than the Telluride, which has some of the best residual value in the business. Mm. So they're getting amazing lease rates on the EV9 yeah. right now because the residual is so high. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's really good news to hear, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, I think it really depends on you. You obviously have the budget for either. And um, it's do you have the charging infrastructure in place? Are you, you okay with going right into an electric vehicle? I mean, that really is a personal choice. What would you do, Zach? Well, I don't know if you can get an EV9. That's yeah. going to be the problem. You're probably going to be able to get an Atlas um, not too long to wait. It is made in the U.S. Mm -hmm. The EV9, there's going to be a big demand initially for it. That's the thing. It's If, if you're willing to wait, probably... If you want to go electric, that mm -hmm. might be a good we way to really go. We really enjoyed the EV9. Yeah. Wow, what a great vehicle. The interior is beautiful. beautiful. Just beautiful. Has Dodge said anything about redesigning the Durango? Or will they drop the Durango because it's not a huge seller for them, even though it would mean not having a three-row SUV in their lineup? From what I've heard <clears throat> is that the Dodge Durango stays into the 2025 model year, but a new one is coming for 2026. And... These are rumors. I don't think this has been confirmed by Stellantis, uh, but they're saying online that there is going to be a pure electric Dodge Durango, but they will also offer an ICE vehicle. Well, you think about it, um, the Durango is very old and mm. uh, it was the twin, uh, not the twin, the cousin, I should say, to the Jeep Grand Cherokee, both mm. on a similar platform. It was a longer wheelbase version to get the Durango three row SUV. So the, the Jeep was updated almost two years ago now yeah. and they could move the Durango onto the long wheelbase version that they have. Yeah. I mean, they're kind of duplicating anyway. They have the Grand mm -hmm. Cherokee and the Grand Cherokee L, mm -hmm. but I love me a Durango, Andrea, and, and it do. has proven to be incredibly reliable. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one of those vehicles, because they've been making it so long, mm -hmm. if you bought one, I think you'd be happy with it. Mm -hmm. I think so too. I, it's very reliable. JD Power gives it an excellent reliability score. We do like it for its space. We like how it handles. Handles great. Uh, we like a lot about the Durango. Happy holidays to both of you. Happy holidays. Keep up the good work. Are you getting a cyber truck to review? Mm. We talked about that in the last question, yeah, Coffee Cars. Not. How do you get a cyber truck? I mean, this is the problem with a company that has no PR department. Mm -hmm. There's nobody even to email. So I don't I don't know. We don't now, know. Now one of our sons, uh -huh. his friends, parents, long time ago, when the cyber truck was first announced, they went and uh, put an order in. So when this came out, I did send um, my friend a text and I said, do you still have the cyber truck on order? And she said, yes. When it comes, we don't know. So we don't know when it comes and will they go through with it? But I, I'll say, I think we will ask them if we can review their cyber truck. Love your reviews and entertaining content delivery. Thank you. My question is, other than Toyota and Hyundai and Kia, do you see other manufacturers such as GM developing hybrid vehicles? Or do you think they will continue to just jump into full EVs. Well, Jim Farley has announced, he's the CEO of the Ford Motor Company, mm -hmm. that um, they took it in the shin with the with the F-150 Lightning. Mm -hmm. They're stacking up at dealership lots. Um, it's, it's selling, but not at the levels they had hoped. Mm -hmm. And he admitted that maybe they had jumped too quickly into the EV space and are going to go back and deliver more hybrids. And Ford has an excellent hybrid system. They do. And it's a very efficient, almost as efficient as the Toyota system, and there are similarities there. But uh, yeah, they're going to produce more. I haven't heard any more about GM. I, I have some stuff on GM, but it's interesting that Ford is talking about hybrids because they announced that the Ford Explorer hybrid mm -hmm. will be discontinued, which but, is really a shame. But it was an oddball um, engine because it was a V6 hybrid, right. didn't get good fuel economy. So, And then we've also heard that Escape is going to be discontinued, and the Escape hybrid's a great vehicle. Yeah. So I don't know what, what the plans are for it, but they have said they're going to make more hybrids. So GM's president said that they are not going to go with hybrids. They're moving forward with 
pure electric vehicles because they feel that hybrids are a stepping stone to people getting into electric vehicles and they don't believe it's needed. And GM CEO Mary Barra has gone on record stating that their customers are not interested in hybrids. Because they don't offer any. <laughs> how I mean, odd. How can you say your customers aren't interested in hybrids when you don't really have any? I mean, we... Uh, our viewers, they write to us all the time. They love hybrids. They want to get into hybrids. They can't get a Toyota hybrid. The wait time for a Kia Sportage hybrid is quite quite the lengthy wait time. One to two years, I'm hearing. We've said it many times. Toyota's having the last laugh. Yeah. Everybody said, who wants that hokey pokey hybrid? Yeah. Why would anybody want a hybrid? And now they can't make enough of them. But what disappoints me is the Canadian government by 2035, that all new vehicles have to be zero emissions vehicles. And that includes hydrogen, plug-in hybrid, or pure EVs. But where are the hybrids? Why aren't they listed? They should be listed. Well, as we get closer to 2030 and we can see the future is not going to be pure EV by 2035, no. uh, governments are going to have to walk these things back and start including other technologies. I mean, the other thing that people forget mm. is governments can make announcements all they like, but governments can also be turfed out. Yeah. And yeah. we're seeing that in Europe where they've mm. had these progressive governments that have tried to push the agenda forward yeah. and the the electorate just says yeah we're not doing that out you go mm -hmm. that's the case in the netherlands mm -hmm. um we might see that here in canada we've got a big election in the united states so it's, it's easy for governments to make announcements sure. but the people actually have the final say with two things at the ballot box mm -hmm. and with their wallet those two things are very important and i really believe hybrids need to be added to this list plug-in hybrids Hydrogen, fine, and pure EVs give people a choice. Hey guys, you are both so authentic and funny. Thank you. I love the pressure's and trust on you. now, Andrew. The pressure's on. I know. I love and trust your reviews. I love to get into a luxury and sporty SUV, compact or subcompact one day, thinking something practical and comfortable, but you can still have some fun in and pass others on the highway. For reference, I like the Macan Cayenne Stelvio, not the Tonelli X1, X3, and Q3. I'm definitely open to CPO. I currently drive and love a 2019 Mazda CX-5 non-turbo. Hmm. Yeah, a lot, lots to think about. You've got some great choices on your list. Well, it's funny because um, just this week we put out the uh, F-Pace video mm. from JAG. And Andrea and I both absolutely came away saying, wow, what a product. Really well done. Really well. Um, so the thing is, that vehicle was updated, I believe, with the new lights at the front and the new interior for the 2022 model year. Mm -hmm. So you could get a CPO, one of those, which was a great handling car. Mm -hmm. Stelvio we love. Mm -hmm. And every time we do an Alpha video, people write and say, I've got an Alpha. I love it. It's been very reliable. Yeah. So there you go. And I like the Macan. Uh, big fan. Big Big fan of the X1, but that's new. So you'd have to wait um, a few years before you can get a used one. X3 is good, and so is the Q3. They're all good. What, They're all what you good. need to do is you need to go and get some seat time now. You got to yeah. go and check them out, see what you like, see what you don't like. You'll see the high and low points of each. Hey, listen, if you can afford a Macan, there's no wrong choice there. No. Um, uh, not not the base engine though. I don't mind the base engine. I think you Zach, gotta... Zach likes more power. No. You guys know me. I love the no. power. But I'm satisfied with the base engine. I think it's good. You're buying a Porsche. You want to have <laughs> a little bit of the Porsche magic. Okay. But you Zach, want... not everybody can afford He's going the Macan CPO. S. He can get a Macan S used and get it under warranty. All right. I never miss an episode from Australia. Love it. I noticed that in Canada, the standard warranty is three years and for Kia Hyundai, five years. In Australia, the default warranty is five years with Kia and most Chinese brands having seven years with unlimited kilometers. Mitsubishi has 10 years if dealer service, how do manufacturers in Canada get away with short changing you? Well, we're not getting short changed. I no. tell you what we're getting is we're getting a major discount on the price of the car. Cars in yeah. Australia are way more expensive. And I found this out because um, uh, 
John White used to be the president of Volkswagen Canada, mm -hmm. and he went and became the president of Volkswagen in Australia. Yeah. And when, whenever we'd run into him at major auto show, he's now retired from uh, the Volkswagen Group. He told us, you know, it's very different in Australia than it is in North America. Australia yeah. have what they call importers of cars. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So say Andrea's import company, Andrea, and she brings in Chinese brands, Maybe she's a Volkswagen importer. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's a Kia importer. And so she now controls the price of the vehicle. Yeah. And so you have obviously a very competitive warranty situation in Australia, but your cars are way, way, way more expensive than they are here. Yeah. Another viewer also from Australia, he reached at one time when we were reviewing a Kia and he's like, I can't believe your prices in Canada compared to our prices in Australia. And, and he was specifically talking about a Kia, even Alfa Romeo. Mayos, everything is just mm -hmm. so much more expensive. The other thing is the Aussie dollar and the Canadian dollar are pretty much mm -hmm. very close in terms of value. So you can easily, if you're in Australia, go to any of the major automakers, whether it's Toyota.ca, that's yeah. the Canadian website. You can look up the price of a Corolla or a Honda, for example, a Civic, and see what the exact same car is in Australia. You'd be shocked by how much cheaper it is. Love your show. Do you think flip headlights will ever make a comeback? When Honda announced the new Prelude, I was excited and disappointed because it doesn't have a flip headlight. My fave was the early 90s Prelude design. Yeah, that was my fave too. I Fantastic. Think it's, I think it's got to do with pro pedestrian safety. You've got to remember, mm -hmm. the one of the reasons why vehicles all look sort of homogenous mm -hmm. is because it's not just the crash worthiness for occupants inside the vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's also the vehicles are designed for crash worthiness for pedestrians. Mm -hmm. So the whole front of the car the hood, there's space between the hood and the engine, for example, and then the headlamps and the grill and all of that are meant to crush and basically yeah. disintegrate. So if you hit somebody at say 10 miles an hour or a bicycle, um, all of that is supposed to crumple in and protect the pedestrian. The, the hood is to deform and absorb the impact of a pedestrian mm -hmm. hitting the hood. So if you had these headlights popping up, well, that's a little dangerous, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's uh, that's what I've heard anyway, why they've disappeared. But you know what? The designers and the technology that's coming forward these days, who knows? Maybe they can make a safe one one day. It would be cool to see. You see all of this new stuff on electric vehicles. I don't know. I'm starting to think anything is possible. Well, what you could do is you could do a virtual one. You could have a, yeah. a digital headlamp that, that looks like it rolls back. What you could do is have them in, in the bumper. Mm -hmm. um, like, say, the old Lincoln ones used to fold like this and that. The one that pops up on top might not pass that. No, no, um, maybe not. Like what that task they have to do. But who knows? So what the future will bring. My goodness. The technology is changing oh, quickly. I know what the future brings, Andrea. What, what's that? 2024 is yeah, coming. Yeah, can you believe so that? So we can't believe that it's already almost uh, the end of another year. I don't even know where the year went, honestly. It was just so crazy. I feel like it was just Halloween and now Christmas is around the corner. Didn't our dog walker send you a message saying how many how many nights that we were out of town? Yeah, he said he looked after the dog. How many days he walked the dog in 2023 for us was 100 days. So that means we were out of town 100, 100 days. days. That's a third of the year. Wow, I, I didn't even realize we were gone that much, but I guess he kept track. I mean, we do pay him, so <laughs> I would keep track too. Anyway, that's it for us today. Uh, thank you for watching. And to get a question in, follow along on Instagram at motormouth underscore Andrea every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific time. I put a post out. Once we gather all of our questions, the post is deleted and we start the show. See you then.